My guest today on Dan's podcast is Professor Natasha Udabin-Siva. Close. Close. Um, at Columbia University, whose specialty is in uh, geopolitics and energy. And she teaches classes there. And I thought uh, that um, given what's been going on in Ukraine, this would be a very good time to talk to you about your view on the situation. You were born and raised in Russia. Yes, I was born and raised. Hi, Dan. It's good to see you. Um, I was born and raised in Russia. And actually, I used to spend my summers in Kiev, where my aunt lives. So, yes, but yes, I, I was raised in, in Moscow. And uh, you came to America when, about 1981? 1991. Yeah. A um, couple months before the uh, coup happened in Moscow. I see. And you've been here in New York ever since. Yes, and we live here, yes. So uh, ever since we have been here, and um, I go back and forth for a while because my mom was there, now she passed away, so, and my friends in Moscow. And uh, before, before we get to the meat of the call, uh, you, you have been coming out to Montauk and for a long time, and now you bought a house in Manorville. How do you like the East End? Oh, we love East End. We actually in East Mauritius. We absolutely love it. And at this particular moment, I'm here, actually, <laughs> in East Mauritius. Yeah. It's good to see you. Yes, thanks. And... Um, so let's let's get into what's going on right now and uh, what what you think the effects are going to be in this situation. Uh, well, it's like we're watching the horror movie first because Russians and Ukrainians are fighting and uh, uh, Russians invaded Ukraine. Um, the situation is very fluid, so we don't know what what's going to happen. Uh, the sad part uh, that the propaganda in Russia is so um, harsh and so convincing that a lot of people, I just spoke with my friends, and they said that their daughter came from school and she said, oh, Americans invaded Ukraine. And that is what's going on. A lot of people, well, they explain her, but a lot of people actually do believe that it's all Americans' fault. Um, so when we see it from here, uh, we assume that there will be that Putin will be losing support among people. Um, and just this phone call, I was like, oh my God, he's not losing support. It's just, it's there. It uh, seems like absolutely brainless uh, aggression towards the West. So it's very hard to say, to say and to predict what's going to happen. It seems like he is doing what he says he will do. Um, and the latest we heard from him that he's going to use, or at least like he's blackmailing the world with a nuclear weapon. Of course, I hope it's not, it's not going to happen or it will be prevented somehow, uh, but it's a very, you know, we're all very anxious at this point. That's here we are, not good news. What about um, the sanctions? Will that have any effect on his behavior? And, no. and what, will it, what will the actual results be in, in Moscow? I don't think sanctions will have immediate effect on his behavior, but it, will, it should have the effect because it's really unprecedented sanctions because of the central bank is Central Bank of Russia is sanctioned. So they don't have any access to currency. And that's very important for them. However, so uh, from that point, I don't think we as a world have to, um, to be anxious that they will stop the flow, flow of gas and oil to the world mar markets because this is their major flow of money, of currency to the budget. At the same time, if we want real sanctions and we want real effect, 
theoretically, we should uh, put sanctions and embargo on uh, oil exports, which right now seems pretty impossible because we're all very dependent on, on the flow of Russian oil to the world markets. Well, the sanctions so far that include um, seizing the assets of Putin and many other people from Russia and the United States. Uh, airspace was uh, shut down to the Russians. Yes, it's, it's true. And of course, it will have, um, uh, you know, people, there is a panic in Moscow. Uh, there is, it seems like there is no money. People cannot open uh, right now. They're trying to uh, transfer money abroad and they cannot do this. Uh, but most of the people don't have money on their accounts. Most, I mean, they have some. Most of the people don't want to, to uh, they're not pro-Western. Um, so uh, we have to see how it will play out right now. Yes, we're saying that it's very difficult. It's very different. Um, it, it's supposed to be really like a huge financial bomb because there is sanctions. Uh, some banks are taking out from SWIFT and uh, there are sanctions on a central bank. Uh, it, it's, it still has to be proved. Well, well yesterday the ruble one was devalued by 20%. Um, now, if this continues, does this backlash to us or does it hurt them? No, it will hurt them. Yes, if it will continue, it should hurt them and it should hurt very soon. Not today, not tomorrow. So let's say if they really move, I don't know how efficient they will be at the war in Ukraine, but here the question is, it's like, you know, what, what we want, uh, will they manage at, during this time to invade Ukraine fully? And for example, to capture Kyiv, I hope not, but it is possible. That, that's what I mean. For stopping war in Ukraine, um, it, it the war goes uh, longer than they than they uh, suppose it's supposed to from the Russian side. If Ukrainians can hold for another week, so maybe then you know the effect effect of sanctions will come and you know they will just lose the war and that's it. But it's not clear for how long Ukrainians can hold it. Well, I wanted to ask you about uh, the relationship uh, culturally between Ukraine and Russia. Um, do, is the Ukrainian language a dialect of Russian, or is it its own language? It's it's an it, no, it's an its own language. It's different. There is a lot of similarities in that, uh, but um, it's different. And when Ukrainians are talking very fast. I can get some words, I can get general understanding, but it's a different language. Yes, it, it is a different language. But at the same time, of course, it is, you know, there are so many um, blood connections between people. Um, there are so like, many relatives, you know, in both sides. Like you never thought who is Ukrainian, who is, who is Russian. It was just kind of like had the feeling of the one nation. However, I left from the Soviet Union. So I left from the different country and I never lived in Russia where in Russia, um, for some reason, at least I was told by some people in um, Gimor, that's an international institute, when they were saying they were told, and it was many years ago, uh, that Ukrainian is a geopolitical, um, uh, is geopolitical enemy for Russia. Why? I don't know. There was a lot, of, when I was coming to Russia, I saw a lot of aggression towards Ukrainian. I never could understand it. And that was building up for a long time. Very unfortunate. Not, of course, from all people, but yes. The, uh, yes. the, other, pos the other thing that's a little scary is with the Baltic and Scandinavian nations, the... Uh, the Baltic nations are in NATO and and uh, EU, I believe. Yes, they are. They're very small countries, but Sweden and Norway and Finland 
never joined the EU. NATO. Right. But no, sure Norway is that. in Norway is part of NATO. It is. Nor yes, Norway is part of NATO. Sweden right now is talking about being part of NATO. However, um, Russian um, foreign minister uh, warned, um, you know, ma made a warning, you know, whatever it means, it's not clear. But yes, they took the notice that Finland and uh, Sweden are talking about becoming part of uh, NATO. They were taking neutrality. Um, so um, right now, my understanding is that Ukraine, I don't know, as we talk, there are negotiations between Russia and uh, uh, Ukraine. Um, my understanding is Zelensky wants to uh, offer neutrality uh, for Ukraine and full stop uh, and withdraw of, um, of Russian uh, troops. I'm like knowing, observing Putin, I don't think that will happen. Well, he'll probably take over the country eventually. That's his goal. That's his goal. Uh, that always was his dream and obsession. Um, and, um, um, you know, Putin is, very, from people who know him, or like at least, you know, communicated with him personally, everyone is saying he's very stubborn. Um, I do think he's paranoid. I, I do think he likes to create parallel realities. I don't know if he believes in these parallel realities, uh, realities but he um, convinces everyone uh, about this parallel. He creates, you know, dream world for himself, or not dream world. Uh, his idea when he came to power, uh, he wanted, and basically he created, he wanted to create separate state, uh, far, far, in Russia, beyond uh, Ural Mountains, um, that there will be different uh, governors, that they will only, you know, report to him. And basically he did it de facto because he leased uh, enormous amount of space uh, in the Far East to uh, Chinese. And they're, they're like, you know, uh, digging for real uh, metals there. Um, it's not discussed much in uh, in Russia, but that's what it is. Um, so, how is yeah. the Ukrainian character different from the Russian character? It seems from uh, my just seeing them and people in action that they're much, uh, uh, Ukrainians seem to be much more relaxed and the Russians seem uh, much more factual. Well, Steve <laughs> but I don't know. You're, you're there. I'm not. You've been there. I, you know, Ukrainians, well, I would say that's a climate in a way. It's funny because, you know, there's more sun and they're closer to Europe. I don't, I wouldn't say there is a lot of difference in character, but yes, from a side, it seems like they're more active. They're more like freedom. Like, well, you know, there are a lot of Russians who also you know, active and laughing and um, it's, uh, and the thing is uh, like right now, Russians also who are trying to protest, they immediately arrested immediately. And I think it's, uh, yeah, you can say it's in the blood and genes that there was so many oppression for so long. Um, but Ukrainians also was under, under this oppression. So, um, but I have to tell you, I do respect what they're doing right now, how they're fighting. It really, you know, you can you can applaud what they're doing yeah. uh, and how they're defending their country. That's for sure. Wow. Well, it's quite a situation. It's uh, it's very tough situation. And uh, right now, yes, it's a chaos in terms of uh, prices because uh even we still get a uh, russian well by the way us right we the us yeah. get half a million half a million of uh barrel of oils every day from russia i don't know if it will change uh, with the war or not but we, and um 
the first importer is Canada, right? And then Mexico and then Russia. We get from Russia a little bit more oil than we're getting from Saudi Arabia. That's going to be quite a change. Do, do you think that Putin, uh, do you, excuse me, do you think that uh, um, Biden is uh, ill-advised or do you think he's doing the best he can? I think he's actually very well advised. That's my opinion. I think Biden managed to create the unity that Trump managed completely to destroy. And when I mean, I say unity, unity between uh, in in Atlantic uh, in um, between you know Europe and um, and US, uh, and kind of like restore NATO. And I think he's public policy and his approach, I mean, what I mean by public policy, that he made every move of Putin and, and Kremlin public, that kind of like, you know, united the whole world uh, against Putin. And he showed what this person, uh, you know, this uh, government is doing. So I think it's a very efficient policy. Well, um, th thank you for your opinions and, uh... We've run out of time, and uh, okay. uh, I'm speaking to uh, adjunct professor Natasha Utensiva uh, from Columbia University, and uh, thanks for being on the show. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Dan, for having me. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.